When I first introduced the syntax of the for loop, I said that the thing that we put to the left of the arrow in our generator is actually a pattern. Now to this point, the only patterns that we've used have been variable names to bind things to, but it's worth looking at how we could do more. So once again, I said that the thing that we have over here is actually a Scala pattern. Uh, and of course, a, a pattern that is just a name winds up becoming a variable name and values are bound to it. What if we have something that's more interesting? So, for example, let's make a list of tuples. Three, four, one, seven, six, five, zero, three, one, nine. Okay, that's in red six. Let's actually give it a name tuples. So to illustrate the ability to use patterns, we have the ability to do something like this, n1, comma, n2, in tuples. And let's just print line n1, n2. Okay. This should read in a fairly straightforward way we are taking the values out of tuples and we are binding them into this tuple pattern here. So the first value gets stored in N1 and the second value gets stored in N2. Fairly straightforward. Uh, it's much like when we declared vals and we use tuples to pull values out of them. So this would work nicely. If we had our earlier expression where we generated X and Y values like this, I could later have a for loop that actually pulls the X and Y from that grid, and then we could do things with X and Y. Of course, this isn't the only thing we can do with patterns. We can do patterns on many different things. Uh, what makes the for loop pattern interesting, though, is the fact that it will work for anything that, let's come over here and let's yield n2. And this is a more interesting expression because when we did matches, if you think back to that, you'll remember that this now is only going to match things that have a one in the first element and it's gonna bind n2 to the second. Now if we did this with a val declaration, this would crash for anything that didn't have a one in the first place. And our set of tuples definitely has stuff that's not one. It does have three different tuples in here that are ones, but it also has things like the three, four and the six, five. And if we tried to do this with a val declaration, it would crash. If we did it with a match, we'd have to have other cases to pick those up. Turns out that in the case of the for loop, this works just fine because anything that doesn't match the pattern that's provided over here is simply skipped over. And that's a, a very beneficial thing in a number of different situations. Uh, later on, we'll wind up seeing how we can do regular expressions in Scala. Turns out this is remarkably helpful for regular expressions because everything that matches the pattern for the regular expression, will the for loop will execute. And for everything that doesn't, it'll just be skipped over automatically. So this isn't just the ability to have a pattern, it's also to do a match on the pattern and then to skip things that don't match the provided pattern. And that makes them uh, you know, rather useful. We can also show at this point how we can do patterns on some other things. Now we've done patterns on lists. For example, our list tuples here, we've seen how we can use a pattern of the form h cons t, and the first element goes into h, and 
everything else as a list goes into T. We use that for recursive functions. One of the things that we didn't see, so how many elements are in here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Turns out you can also match a list by saying list and giving a whole bunch of values like that. That's not something that I would wind up doing most time. And part of it is, especially in this situation of a val, this is going to, uh, to crash if this over here doesn't have exactly six values inside of it. On the plus side though, if we were doing a pattern like this inside of a for loop, it would skip anything that didn't have six values. We can also use patterns like this for arrays, which can be quite helpful. The place where I use it the most is, for example, if I know that I've gotten a string that has, for example, three numbers separated by, uh, by commas. So a string like one, two, three. Well, we've seen previously we can split that on the commas, and that gives us back an array of strings. And then I could map them all to ints, and now I would have an array of integers. But I have the array. What if I actually wanted to give these names, maybe a, b, and c to these things? Well, it turns out that we could do a val declaration on an array, a, b, c, equals that. Now, of course, if the string doesn't have three values in it, this will cause an exception and crash. But if you know that the values that, it, that the string you're getting has a certain number of fields in it, a pattern like this where you split and then map and then do a pattern match on that can be a very convenient way to get the values out of a string. 